recording? Yes. All right. Hi, um, I'm Sebastian Babel. Um, it's a compiler for your JavaScript. Um, it supports ES6, JSX, and flow types. Um, basically, you put JavaScript in and it gives you JavaScript out. Um, so it'll transform uh, the latest features into fe uh, code that can run currently in your current browser. Um, so this talk isn't going to be about just ES6. If you want to learn it, there's a lot of resources, and I probably can't do it justice. So you can go there if you want to learn more about specific ES6 features. Um, now, this is how it works, I guess. So it passes the, your input code into an AST, um, which is a representation of it that can be modified. Um, the transform manipulates that AST. Uh, it turns like ES6 features into ES5. It uses stuff like static analysis to determine, like, to make your code kind of as simple as possible, um, but still kind of spec compliant. Uh, and then the generator turns your AST back into code that you can read or execute. Um, so Babel comes with a bunch of transformers. Uh, some of them, or most of the ES6 ones, are enabled by default. Um, and then there's a whole bunch of like utility ones that do various utility functions. Um, I'm going to run through a few of the kind of tricky ones, or not necessarily tricky, but kind of special ones. Um, and kind of explain how they work, kind of some of the things they do, um, and hopefully give you a better idea of how it works. Um, so the ES6 spread transformer transforms the ES6 spread into an ES5 concatenate or apply. Um, so you see here that basically you have a function add, um, and then you spread the numbers. Um, note the var nums. Um, it's commented out for a reason. Um, so on the right, uh, it'll turn nums into an array, um, just so it can be properly applied. Um, but then if you uncomment that line, it will track that it's an array, and it will then skip that helper call, because it can be absolutely 100% sure that it will be an array, and it will always be an array. Um, and then something similar for array spread. Um, it ensures that it's an array, so we can concatenate it together. Um, yeah, and then on commenting those lines, it just knows that it's an array. Um, ESX parameters dot rest. Um, these allow you to spread uh, the arguments into an array. So that'll turn all the function arguments into an array called items. Um, now, code on the right may look kind of messy, but that's the most fastest way to turn an arguments object into an array. Um, this will basically be, most people when they're doing this will use array.prototype.slice. Um, that will de-optimize the entire function and can basically like kill performance. Um, so it takes a long approach, but it's also the fastest, so you don't really have to worry about that. Um, and it will also uh, detect kind of common patterns and will kind of simplify your code. So items isn't actually used, only kind of member expressions to that, so it only uses items, the first index. Um, so it'll just inline it to arguments one. Um, and also it'll track the type of args, which will be an array, um, and then it knows that it's an array, so it doesn't have to ensure that it's an array to properly make the code work. Um, another, this is one of the utility uh, transformers, um, inline expressions, um, and it will statically evaluate the expression. So if it, you have an expression that only uses immutable data, um, then it can statically evaluate that, so it can always be sure that that'll be the result. Um, this not really useful for kind of real-world code, since you wouldn't likely have something like this that someone that always evaluates the same thing. <laughs> um, but the next slide, hopefully, kind of, but it's also useful if you have something like um, inlining envir environment variables, so when you're compiling your code um, and you want process.env.node environment um, and you have some logic that kind of uses that, then it will statically evaluate that. It both kind of minifies your code and, yeah, makes it nicer, I guess, since there's less of it and it doesn't have to be ran unnecessarily. Um, and as before, um, so it can detect that byte is a constant like um, declaration. So it is a declaration that isn't modified, um, so reassigned, and it's a, an immutable 
immutable data type, so it can't be manipulated. So it can be absolutely, in, you can be absolutely sure that it will be one all the time, um, and it's transformed in, in land like there. Um, another thing is optimization dot React. Um, React zero point fourteen allows certain optimizations to be done to JSX. Um, so this is kind of exploding uh, React elements into a big object form, which is much faster to um, manipulate, I guess, and let React do its thing. Uh, another thing is reusing constant value types. Um, so it will hoist uh, div class name equals foo um, to the parent scope. So it can be absolutely sure that that will always be the same thing. So instead of reconstructing that div every single time render is called, it'll hoist it and only do it once. Um, now, basically this is something only a compiler can do basically because React doesn't know if the string you passed it was inlined or if it was a result of a variable or something like that. Um, so that's pretty neat. Uh, ES6 .tail call. Um, this will turn recurse, uh, tail call recursive functions, so functions that call themselves. Um, if you call them too many times, then it will blow the call stack and you'll get max call size exceeded. Most of you have probably run into that. Um, and so this will explode it into a form that won't blow the call stack. Um, so it can be ran on infinite times um, and it'll just work. Um, now with tail call recursion, um, so you might think it might kind of like kill performance on functions where that isn't necessary. Um, it can actually result in performance improvements even for functions that don't need that don't need to exceed the call stack. Um, so you can see in Chrome performance is basically on par. Then in Firefox you see it basically, um, which is the blue bar, um, you see a massive increase in performance. Uh, the red one is the old version of tail call recursion, um, and the orange one is the native implementation. Um, that yeah. Um, so another thing that's probably one of the most kind of fiddly parts is um, A6 block scoping. Um, so let variables, they're um, defined to the current block scope, or if they're defined within loops, they are bound to each iteration of that. Um, so Babel can tell that, so you've got I, it just changes the let into a var. Um, it doesn't need to have that bound to each iteration, so it'll just convert it over. Um, but what if you have colliding references? So if it just renamed i to, if, if it just left i as is, then i would evaluate to the last, would evaluate to five. Um, now this obviously isn't intentional. You don't want that in your code if it's relying on like parent variables that are named the same. So it'll rename it to a unique identifier, which in this case is underscore i. Um, but what if you have references inside a closure? So if that function was called without the containing wrapper uh, highlighted in green. Um, that would basically return the last one if get page was an asynchronous function because var would be hoisted. So it automatically inserts a closure, um, inserts that i variable so the inside of it always has access to it. Um, but there's implications for wrapping it in a closure. Um, for example, returning from inside of it, you like to be returning from the closure instead of the outer function. Um, so it just returns an object that it can detect. Um, hey, this is returning. Um, and then it just kind of aliases it outwards. Um, references out of closure with a continue. A uh, similar thing happens there. Just returns continue and then it can say, hey, you're continuing and continue. Um, continue in a break. It switches to a long form kind of switch um, that checks the return values. Uh, obviously, you wouldn't have like code that has a continue and a break, most likely. Um, this, comes, uh, this example isn't really very good, but it's kind of hard to find examples where continue and break are used. Um, now, what if references inside a closure with a label, continue, break, and return? Um, so you obviously have to, to ensure the code runs correctly, you have to kind of uh, map the loop, um, the, the label, sorry. Um, and that's kind of tricky. Um, not many people use labels or don't even know that they're exists or a thing, but this was something that has to be taken into consideration since the code has to basically run correctly all the time, or else of what features or, yeah, features it uses. Um, yeah, so that goes to another thing where spec compliancy, um, Babel is the second one um, with the core.js polyfill. 
Um, yeah, it's most of it's green. Um, if it's not, then or solid green. Uh, if it's not, there's probably some reason why that can't be influenced that way. Um, in which case, it's noted in on in the docs in a caveats page. Um, yeah. So obviously, spec compliance is big, ish, like big deal because if you want to eventually disable some of these transformers, because the transforms that slide that I displayed, um, each of those transforms can be disabled. Um, so if you're targeting a browser that supports classes, you can disable the uh, classes transformer and it will just output classes uh, verbatim. Um, so yeah, your code needs to run the same when it's transpiled as it does when it's not an, in a native implementation. Um, yeah. Um, so how do you use it? Um, simple way is just to npm install g babel, um, and then just put a script in, get a script out, uh, compile a directory into another thing. Or there's babel-node, which will automatically um, compile that script.js, and then all subsequent requires will be compiled as well. So you can basically write code as if it's ES6 without worrying about transpiling it or compiling it. Um, yeah, it's handy. Um, it, will, it also caches that, so in between um, loads or executions of that, it won't have to unnecessarily transform um, each of the scripts, which is handy as well. Um, there's a bunch of integrations for, from like code coverage to the linting. Um, there's also a really good uh, Sublime Babel package that even if you aren't writing ES6 or even just JSX, um, it has really, really solid JavaScript syntax highlighting that's, if you use that and then switch like the default Sublime one, you'll be wanting to go back. <laughs> um, yeah, there's uh, docs. Um, they're basically with uh, examples and instructions on how to use it in the like JavaScript build system of the week. Um, yeah. Um, support, there's a Gitter chat. Um, yeah, there's usually people willing to lend a hand. Um, yeah. Um, yeah, that's it. Um, follow me on GitHub, Twitter, like Snapchat. Um, <laughs> yeah, that's it. <laughs>